video today, we've designed an algorithm that explains the pathway that patients should take to go through uh, tr for treatment for musculoskeletal pain. The pathway has been designed to encourage independence, uh, to encourage, to encourage self-treatment, uh, to reduce the risk of patients going in many different directions through the system and to link at the appropriate times physiotherapy with general medical treatment and specialist treatment. It's also designed to minimise over-imaging costs uh, and so things like MRIs, CT scans, ultrasounds, uh, to minimise those things and save costs for the patient uh, and appropriately use those imaging tests in conjunction with a clinical assessment. Uh, and finally, it's designed to uh, use the skill of the physiotherapist to triage the patient and determine which path the patient needs to take uh, at the earliest possible point. So this algorithm is called the management of musculoskeletal pain. It's, it's any pain of musculoskeletal source. Uh, we've designed this algorithm to go through this particular pathway. Initially a physiotherapy assessment in blue. So the physiotherapist performs an initial assessment and determines if there's any treatment required uh, or just simply self-management with rest and general movement plus or minus simple analgesics like your typical uh, anti-inflammatories um, medications like Nurofen, Voltaren, uh, or analgesics, medications like uh, Panadol. Okay. <laughs> at this point, you see on the sides, there's no imaging required at this point. So doing a, a proper musculoskeletal assessment where we're looking at mechanical movement uh, and symptom response, we can find a lot out about how the tissue is responsive to those movements and whether any uh, major red flags have been identified. We can usually at that point determine whether a person needs to have imaging studies or not. Once red flags have been ruled out uh, in terms of anything that doesn't fit a normal pattern of the assessment, then a treatment trial would be appropriate. And this is where we move down to the first orange square and we usually do a treatment trial for three to four treatments. In that time, you'd expect, you'd always expect an improvement in the condition of between 30 to 40%. If there wasn't an improvement at that point, we'd move to the right side of the page where if it's not responsive, we'd perhaps go back to a, 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 to a reassessment or determine if there's a GP referral uh, required to put this person through the medical system of imaging studies or seeing a specialist. If a reasonable improvement occurs in the first treatment trial of those three to four sessions, then the, the patient moves to the second stage, the, the, orange, the second orange square. And that's when uh, we're really getting our teeth into the case and trying to get lasting change in symptoms. Usually, uh, treatments are between four to six treatments over a period of four to eight further weeks and the improvement that would be expected to be seen would be at least 50% to sometimes 90-95% depends on uh, how long the person has had the problem. Then finally moving into the third stage which is really a far more long-term plan where you're working with patients more than uh, three months uh, this is cleaning up the final uh, stiffness limitations in movement, uh, weak, long-term weakness, uh, and really recovering normal function and improving performance well beyond where the person was at even prior to when they got injured. If anywhere along this path between the second orange rectangle and the third rectangle, there's only a temporary relief of symptoms, uh, this would take you through to the yellow square on the right where you'd be again looking at reassessment with the GP. So you'd go down through the arrow to the right to the blue circle at the bottom and again 
a similar approach of further investigations, perhaps a pain specialist or another type of musculoskeletal specialist, and perhaps imaging studies. But only when there's short-term relief at that stage would that uh, particular action be triggered. Finally, at the bottom of the page, um, there's usually, when people have had symptoms for such a long period of time, there is, there's either two options. Um, one, the patient self-manages the problem for the future and the physio will explain self-management strategies, plus or minus changing some behaviours, plus or minus uh, adding um, simple analgesics. The second option on top of that may be maintenance physiotherapy, which can uh, occur roughly between every three months to every one month. So somewhere between about four to 10 times per year is appropriate to do maintenance physiotherapy to, to keep the tissue uh, moving, uh, not stiffening up too much, and that will complement the self-treatment that the patient is doing. Finally, just draw your attention to the purple square on the left. Um, the education in self-management begins with the initial assessment and occurs through these three orange rectangular paths as the patient is going through treatment. They're also learning uh, what causes their pain, what makes their pain better, how to avoid re-injury, and how best to self-manage the condition so that they're prepared, they're well prepared for uh, an independent uh, management of treatment at a basic level and that will complement the physiotherapy uh, maintenance in the long term. Um, so finally again this system is designed to encourage independence in self-treatment um, to minimize costs and over imaging uh, with MRI, CT, ultrasound, x-ray. It's a system that encourages efficient triage um, so the patient moves through a staged process with specific goals along the way. Uh, and it's well designed to link physiotherapy with the general medical community uh, so the patient can move forward in the system if things don't go well uh, at the initial uh, primary care level stage. Thanks very much.